Carol, hello. We hope you're doing well in Mexico. We just wanted to uh, send our best regards to you. Believe it or not, we made it through a meeting without you. It was very rough. <laughs> we have a few scars to show for it, but we did make it through. But we just wanted to take a second for all your friends at TV Toastmasters to send our best regards to you and best regards for you to get well and get back to us as soon as possible because we don't plan to do this too many more times without you, okay? <laughs> Jerome? Yeah, Carol, just wanted to say to you that we love you, we missed you today, and you certainly are in our prayers, and we know that a healing is evident in this very moment. Hang in there and uh, get back to us because we need you and we miss you. We definitely miss you, Carol. How can we exist without Carol Cormoy in the studio with us? So please come back soon. Hi, Carol. Look forward to seeing you back here real soon. And I hope you're finding some good water to drink. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks, Carol. Um, and I, you're my mentor, and I appreciate all the help that you've given me. I can't believe my mentor is in Mexico. Wow. Anyway, I enjoyed the coffee that we had at uh, Bob Evans, and the talks we had about the program here. Um, my giving my first speech to you over the phone was a big help. It, uh, it helped a lot. So again, thanks, appreciate it. Get well soon and get back here. Carol, it's a beautiful Saturday morning up here and the flowers are blooming, but we are missing one thing. We don't have your smiling face here, and I don't hear your voice telling us how we can get in line. So we miss you greatly. Take care of yourself and come back to us soon. Carol, you're in our thoughts and prayers, and I know your wonderful attitude will help you to work through this and that your healing and wholeness is the truth of the day for you here and now. Hey, Carol, it's Tiffany. I miss seeing you come in this morning with the banner in one hand and the big box in the other and having everything all set, but we managed to survive and we managed to thrive in today's meeting. So get back here soon so we don't have to be scrounging for things. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we all say together, get, get well, well, Carol! <laughs> Bye. Good morning, Northern Kentucky and Cincinnati. TV Toastmasters Club 9523 is in session. It is a beautiful day this morning. This is actually the best day we've had so far this year, in my opinion. I have short sleeves on for the first time in the Toastmasters meeting this year, so this is always a big moment for me. <laughs> it means we're finally making progress towards summer. It's, uh, the birds were singing, so I'm, it's, it's just a great day to have a Toastmasters meeting. For those of you in our TV audience, TV Toastmasters meets the third Saturday of each month at 9 a.m. We meet at the beautiful new Anderson Town Center located in Anderson, Ohio. And we would like to welcome you to join us um, one Saturday sometime this spring or summer. We have a um, guest with us who is actually more of a dignitary than a guest. Um, I'd like all of us to welcome Kevin Voorhees, who is the District 40 Lieutenant Governor of Marketing. Thank you, Kevin. Once again, like I said, it's a great day. It's a, it's a, it is a great day, but there is one challenge that we are trying to overcome. It's only happened twice in my time at TV Toastmasters, but Carol Cormelink is not here, and Carol is more or less the, uh, the binding force of this club, so we will try to struggle through without her presence and uh, wish her the best in Mexico. I'm, not, I'm sure our, our signal probably doesn't go down to Mexico, but, <laughs> but I'm sure she'll, she'll watch this DVD at some point. Um, we have a great show set up today with a number of fantastic speakers and a number of great table topics, and I just can't wait. So with no further ado, I'd like to welcome our Toastmaster for this afternoon or this morning. Please welcome Tiffany Everett. Good morning, audience, both here in our studio and at home. I'd like to make a couple changes to our agenda that we have for the in-studio audience. Our second evaluator today will be Jerome Manigan. Our timer today will be Kevin Voorhees. We have two fabulous speeches that are going to be happening today. 
First, however, we need to learn our word of the day to improve our vocabulary and also to find out what our grammarian and odd counter does. I'd like to bring up Sheila Ma Baker. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. First, I'm going to tell you about being grammarian and awe counter. All of us, including me, use the word awe as a filler. We also use words like um, you know, so, lots of fillers that we use instead of just being quiet and then moving on to the rest of the sentence. So I will be checking those as well as grammatical errors, mostly to improve our speaking. All of us should be aware of good English at all times. So now that I've said that, I want to give you the word of the day. Bug. B-U-G. Now you think bug is an easy enough word to remember. There are a lot of ways we use bug. We think of bugs as being insects. We think of bugs as she bugs me. I can't stand it. She's getting in my way. I want to bug out. Well, there are so many things that we have the word bug in, such as her eyes bugged out when she heard about this. We use the word bug many different ways, but when we're talking about bugs, they're actually an insect, but they're not all insects. Some insects are bugs, some are not. Obviously, the flu bug is not an insect. So we have a lot of different kinds of bugs that we use, and I want to be seeing each and every person here use the word bug. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Sheila, for giving us such a great word as bug. I'm happy that it's early spring when all the bugs are not out to bother me, such as mosquitoes, bees, and wasps. Our next person on the agenda today is going to be leading us in our impromptu speaking session in his table topics. Her name is Christine Sullivan. I'd like to welcome Christine up. I am the Table Topics Master today, and that's a pretty um, tall order, I think, compared to some of the folks that we've had up here in that role previously, but I hope I can fulfill this uh, very well. The role of Table Topic Master is really to put people on the spot. Well, that's part of it, but it's also to help all of our members address and answer impromptu questions. This happens all the time in the workplace. It's something that can really help you grow and be able to troubleshoot questions that are totally unexpected. So with that, I'd like to kick it off with the first question. And yesterday I was in a doctor's office and saw a magazine mm -hmm. cover that really struck me as very provocative. It was, from all places, good housekeeping and it said, happiness is a choice. And I wanted to ask Darren if he could come up here and address whether that's true or not. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master and our TV audience as well as our guests in the studio. I do believe happiness is a choice and it took me a long time to realize this, but over the past two to three years, what I've come to realize is that in some respects, when we wake up in the morning, whether we're going to be happy or sad has virtually nothing to do with what happened the day before or what's going to happen that day. It just appears that some, some, some days you wake up, and it's just the greatest day in the world. It seems like no matter what goes wrong, you just let it flow, flow off your back and, and you're happy. Other days, whatever happens, the most minute detail can get you down. And what I've come to realize is that there are certain people who, no matter what happens, they can be millionaires, have the greatest family in the world, and they still hate their lives. And it's all a matter of how you approach life, how you approach um, your circumstances. And there are other people who, who aren't the, the wealthiest people in the world. Maybe they have various problems at home, but they whistle and go about life like they have not a, not a care in the world. So I, I definitely, it took me a long time to realize that, but I've definitely come to realize that, that people who are satisfied with their place in life and satisfied with their circumstances tend to be more happy. People who are never satisfied regardless of what you know, riches or, or great things are heaped upon them, those people will never be happy. So I do think it, it happiness really is a choice, even though it's not quite as simple as that. But 
but, but most of us can make that choice um, if we can find out what is important to us that, that we can be happy with regardless of what our circumstances are. Madam Table Topics Master. One of the other age-old questions that is frequently asked is about leadership. And a lot of times I've heard this debate back and forth and I w wanted to ask the group, are leaders born or made specifically around this type of arrangement where the whole purpose of Toastmasters is to grow and get better at our jobs. Steve, I'd like to ask you that question. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master, fellow Toastmasters, and our honored guests that are looking in from home. If I get the question, if I understand the question correctly, it's are leaders born or is it something that you can acquire? I think that there are two parts to this question. The answer is yes to both parts. I think that there are some basic skills that you have to have as an individual, but these are some native skills that people have, and they can be developed. It is not exclusively dependent upon how much of the native skills you have, but you have to have some raw materials to start with. If you have a person who does not like to interact with people at all, I think you're going to have a little bit bigger challenge as far as getting them to acquire some of the skills that are needed for leadership which deal with the human interaction part of it. On the other hand, a lot of leadership is learned. We learn from the people that we admire, the people that we interact with that are leaders, and we also have to realize that leadership does not have to be in what are some of the traditional forms that we often see. There's a thing called servant leadership where you really don't have formal authority over people. Toastmasters even talks about that. In fact, that's one of the things that a lot of club officers experience. So, Madam T Table Topics Master, in response to your question, I would say that leadership is two parts. There have to be some native skills, but you don't have to have an overabundance of them. And the other part is it is learned. All right, for my final question, this is something that's been very relevant in the news lately, and it sparked a lot of debate. Piracy, who would have thought of piracy in today's day and age? But one of the big questions that have come up is the fact that due to mar maritime law, we actually um, do not allow our seamen to arm themselves while at sea. And the question is, because of these attacks that are going on in Somalia, mm -hmm. is it something that should be changed? And Tiffany, I wanted to ask you that question. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. That is a very provocative question. I believe that seamen now should be armed at sea, given the fact that what has been happening recently around the Cape of Africa with the Somalia pirates. I feel that in order for them to have some sense of safety, they've got to be able to protect themselves. And as these pirate invasions have grown more risky, they have gotten more sophisticated equipment such as night goggles, such as grenade launchers and other things. And they, these shipmen who are shipping items to us on a daily basis need to have a way to protect themselves in order to make sure that we, the consumer, are able to have the things that we need, such as the oil that we have for our cars, such as the clothing that we want to wear and some of the foods that we want to eat. 
if we can't have the protection with these shipmen that are risking their lives, what is it really worth for us? Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity to be a Table Topic Master. It was a lot of fun coming up with the questions. Um, not necessarily putting people on the spot, but giving them a chance to uh, speak up and, and give their views on various things. So I appreciate that. Um, with that, I'd like to go ahead and bring Tiffany back up. Thank you very much, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. We are now moving into the portion of our meeting where we have prepared speeches. Today we have two of our members giving speeches from the Competent Communicator Manual. Our first speaker today is Don Wuss. He's one of our newer members of our club and he's giving Project 3, Get to the Point from the Competent Communicator Manual. His speech today is going to be five to seven minutes long and the title of his speech is Open the Door. Open the Door, Don Wuss. Okay, thank you, Madam Toastmaster and viewing audience and those who are present topic for my speech, as Tiffany said, is open the door. And um, we knock on many doors during our lifetime. Uh, open the door, Richard. Open the door, Richard. Open the door and let me in. Open the door, Richard. Open the door, Richard. Richard, why don't you open that door? Now, doors can be used arguably as a metaphor for various experiences in our life. So the point of my speech is to demonstrate how a collage can be made. How a collage can be made. We take the experiences of our lives and put them together, put them on a collage. I will demonstrate. The title of my collage is going to be Academics, Schools, Experiences that I've had in various schools. I graduated from high school and it was springtime, and it was the spring of the year that I wrote a poem. You can put poems on the collage. You can? Yes, you can. You can put poems up there. It's when your heart grows stronger and the birds begin to sing. It's when the days grow longer that you know it to be spring. It's when the sun shines brighter on top of every hill. Put a hill up there and put the sun up there and tumbles down the valley waking every daffodil. It's when a young man's fancy lightly turns to love. It's the cooing in the morning of the sleepy turtle dove. Put the dove up there, the morning. You can put the sun up there? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. It's when your heart grows fonder that you know it to be spring. It's a tale ne'er told in art, because it's a feeling, not a thing. So let's move on to college, the University of Dayton. We can put the campus up there. We can put our friends up there, full images of our friends. That would all fit up there? Yes, it would fit up there. Just put it up on your collage. You D, our hearts ring true, or you are hope and inspiration our colors red and blue will sing to us from God and nation you are the first you you are the last you you are the only Dayton you you can put a song up there you sure can they all fit up there it's amazing let's move on to Xavier University for we will sing a song and sing it loud and long let it be our pledge today our alma mater, loud and strong, O Xavier for a ra ra ra. <laughs> Put it up there; it fits.
let's move along to work for a little bit. They're represented by a new car. Or not exactly a new car, a used car. White on top and brown on the bottom, 210. And then back to Xavier, this time riding back and forth in a new used car. Let's, uh, let's move up to the University of Detroit. Engineering school, co-oping, images of General Electric, rocket engines, everything that you want to know about a rocket engine, put it up there. Anything you want to know about a nuclear engine, anything you want to know about a, a jet engine, put them all in your collage. Let's try the seminary. Freedom. Freedom in the seminary. <laughs> Freedom in the seminary. Another poem. Oh, to sail the southern seas again, I'm longing for this to be, and to have my ship. T'was a pirate ship, a ship that rode well in the sea. But to feel the deck of that thieving craft, a rolling with each wave, and to hear the songs that me hearty sang, a sounding like the grave. But to feel the wind in a sturdy sail, the likes you never knew, and away up high again the sky, the Jolly Roger flew. Oh, to have my crew, t'was a pirate crew, a mumbling, grumbling lot, a waylayin' and a baylayin', and they'd quick as die as not. But taken by the ear was I, so this likes was not to be, and put in this confining place that's far from any sea. Oh, to sail the southern seas again, I'm a-longin' for this to be. And so on, and so on, and so on. A song about, a poem about freedom, the greatest gift that we have. Freedom informed by the intellect. Use it well. Do not lose your freedom. Can you put freedom on your collage? Yes, you can. So we move on from the seminary to Xavier University again. This time, a cap and gown goes up on your collage. The Clef Club, moving from doing concerts at different towns. We went to Chicago. Louisville, Columbus, New York, different places to give concerts. Put trombones up there. Put, put uh, clarinets, musical instruments, any musical instruments you can think of. Put them all on your collage. <sighs> 76 trombones led the big parade. And 110 cornets right behind. They were followed by rows and rows of the finest virtuosos, the cream of every shape and kind. There were copper bottom timpanies and horse platoons, thundering, thundering all along the way. Very soon, happiness, big fat say, Good night, my someone, good night, my love. Sleep tight, my someone, sleep tight, my love. Put songs up on your collage. They will go up there fine. So we need to stop and think about different topics that, with which we could make a collage. And make several collages with different cop topics. And put them all together. Put them up on the screen so you can sit back and view where time is not there, there's time is, is gone, place is gone. You have a beautiful image that you can sit back, relax, and enjoy. Mrs. Toastmaster. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for a fabulous speech. Our next speaker today is Linda Ketchum. Linda is currently the Area 57 governor, which covers the eastern side of Hamilton County. She is past president and currently treasurer of Springdale Communicators. Linda has been an active member of Toastmasters since April 2006 and has achieved her Advanced Communicator Gold and Advanced Leader Bronze certifications. 
Today she will be presenting her sixth project in the Competent Communicator Manual, known as Vocal Variety. She is to use a pleasing voice with proper balance, pitch, volume, rate, and uses of pauses to enhance her message. Her voice should add, reflect and add meaning to her presentation. Her title today is The Mouse. The Mouse, Linda Ketchum. There was a mouse and it lived in a farmhouse with a farmer and his wife. One day it peeks through its crack in the wall and sees a package being unpacked on the table. And it thinks, oh goody goody, something to eat. And then out of the package comes a mouse trap. The mouse is horrified and it runs outside to its friend the chicken. And it says, there's a mouse trap, there's a mouse trap. And the chicken looks at it and it says, why are you bothering me? I don't care. This has nothing to do with me. And the chicken goes back to eating the bugs. The chicken, the mouse then runs to the pig and it says, there's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap in the house. And the pig looks at the chicken and says, I'm sorry, but I can't help you. I'm about to pray. I will pray for you. And the mouse is absolutely horrified and it runs to the cow and it says, there's a mouse trap, there's a mouse trap. And the cow looks at the chicken, at the mouse and says, wow, that's too bad. But it's no skin off my nose, so why are you bugging me? And the mouse runs back in the house and hides. That night, in the middle of the night, there's a loud snap and the tra that trap has been tripped. And the farmer's wife jumps out of bed and runs into the room, unfortunately without turning on the light. And she doesn't see the venomous snake that has been trapped in the trap. And the snake bites her. And her husband rushes her to the hospital. She's sent home with a fever. Now think about it. What's one of the things we always do when someone isn't feeling well? We make chicken soup. And the farmer gets his hatchet and goes outside to get the main ingredient for the soup. Well, his wife is not feeling any better and all the neighbors in the neighborhood come over to sit with her. The farmer has to have something to feed them. Guess who's next on the chopping block? It's the pig, and he's gone. And the wife, unfortunately, passes away. And somebody has to feed all the people who shows up at the, at the funeral. And the cow goes to slaughter. And the very sad mouse sits and looks out the crack. What's the purpose of this story? Some of you may have heard one of the crew members on the pirated American ship say, we live in a global world. It's a global problem. The mouse had a global problem and no one listened. Now, I'm not saying that we should go rent a ship and go out and fight Samoan pirates, but what can we do to make a difference? Where can we respond? April the 22nd is the 39th anniversary of Earth Day. In 1970, Earth Day started from a groundswell of individuals of about 20,000 who came together to bring an emphasis to the needs of this planet. This year, literally, probably close to a billion people all over the world will celebrate Earth Day. The, 
the theme of Earth Day, the theme of the ecological movement now is to reduce, reuse, recycle, and respond. The cow, the chicken, and the pig did not respond. And they met the ultimate consequences. How as we as individuals can we respond to the needs of our planet? I have three simple ideas. Actually, I have more than that. We can reduce what we buy. If we don't need it, get rid of it by giving it to someone who actually needs it, selling it, repurposing, finding a new use for it. We can reduce what we buy. We can recycle. We can take our own handy dandy little bags to the store and not use plastic and paper. One of my favorite repurpose ideas is I keep a stack of washcloths in my bathroom to use as hand towels. So that any time that I need to dry my hands, I just grab one and I rewash it. And I don't use paper towels, I don't get a big towel dirty, that works. One of the simpler things to do is low emission fluorescent bulbs. These have come so far in the last few years. Yes, they're a little more expensive, but over the life of one of these little bulbs, do you have any idea how much money you can save? Between 50 and $60. Granted, the bulb cost maybe nine or 10. The light may take a little longer to come over, but if you replace several bulbs or all the bulbs in your house with one of these, you could save a substantial amount of money as well as reducing your electric bill and taking a small step to reduce your carbon footprint. We live in a global world. We are responsible for this world. We are responsible for how we stand on this planet. We can't say anymore, it's no skin off my nose. Stop bugging me. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, Linda, for a fabulous speech. We are now moving to the portion of our meeting where we look for ways to improve upon ourselves. This is the portion of our meeting where we listen to our evaluations and find out how we did as far as our grammatical errors and our timing. Some people might say that this is the part of the meeting that bugs them, but I find this to be the part of the meeting that encourages me to become a better speaker. I would like to bring up to our lectern Steve Ehrenholtz. Steve. Thank you, Madam Table Topic, or <laughs> Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. I've got table topics on the brain. <clears throat> and you gave us a real nice introduction as to what the evaluation portion of the meeting is going to be covering. I have an excellent evaluation team working with me today, and we're going to hear from each of them about different aspects of the meeting. We'll hear evaluations on the individual speakers, as well as receiving some feedback on some other aspects of our meeting. Our first evaluator today, who is going to give us his evaluation of Don West's speech, is none other than our club president, Darren Henderson. Darren. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator fellow Toastmasters, and especially Don. Don, I've, this is your third speech. I've heard all three of your speeches. And the purpose of the speech was get to the point, and one objective was to select a speech topic and determine its general and specific purpose. And I'll start out by saying I thought this was the best speech you've given so far. Every time you've spoken, I think we've seen definitely improvement along the way, so I definitely commend you for that. And the concept you were using was the concept of creating a collage based upon your life and putting different things up on that collage, you know, as you go through the course of your life, which I thought was a, a very unique topic and a very good way to get at that. One thing uh, I'll say to begin with is I thought your nervousness, the first time you got up here, you, you remember you were very nervous and it was, it, was, it was very evident. The last time you got up here, you were much less nervous. And this time, once again, you, you're making significant strides in, in, in controlling your nerves. I mean, in all honesty, 
I didn't see any sign of nervousness other than the same nervousness we all have when we get up in front of people. So very good job. You've, done a, you've made a tremendous amount of progress in three speeches on controlling your nerves. I also thought you had very good eye contact. That's one thing that's also definitely improved. Your eye contact was pretty good throughout the speech, uh, which I definitely give you credit on. You had a very unique use of poetry and singing, which you know I would never get up here and sing, so I definitely <laughs> commend you for that. Um, but you have a good voice, so it's okay for you, just not okay for me. Um, so I thought it was a very unique speech, and uh, but a couple things uh, I think that you possibly could have done better. One one purpose was to I think we definitely understood the general purpose, which was to tell us a little bit more about your life, which was a great thing because we definitely got to know more about you. The specific purpose was probably not quite as clear, and you don't necessarily always have to just come out and say it, but that was one point of the speech was to just be very clear with the audience as to what the specific purpose of your speech was. You also had a very poetic speech, and one thing, and some of these things are more or less, may just be my opinion, so I'd, I'd probably get the opinion of some other people in the club too, but um, in between the speeches or the poems and the, and the songs, you also had a, a very poetic sentence structure. So. It was sometimes, it could, it could have been clear if you, after the, between the poems and the songs, you just had a very straightforward sentence structure like, that explains what I did at Xavier, that explains what happened here, but you, you, but you kind of talked in the, in the second person, which got to be a little bit confusing sometimes. You know, it was like, you can do this, you can do that. And I know it kind of went along with your theme, but to me, it got to be a little bit confusing sometimes. But I think that might, that could just be a, a matter of opinion. Uh, also, one thing, as you begin to combat that nervousness and do a very good job at it, one thing I'd like to challenge you with is to begin to work on your vocal variety and voice inflection. You do that when you're reading the poems, but then when you, when you, when you get off the poems or the songs, then your vocal variety and voice inflection tends to be pretty monotone. Um, but like I say, you've, you've combated some of the nervousness, so I now think you can, you, can, you can definitely make that next step. But overall, I like to say, I think, you know, when I look at your first speech versus this speech, there's been a tremendous amount of improvement. I definitely enjoyed the speech. I th definitely think you have a certain style that's very unique, which I think I would definitely just build upon that because I think it's great to have a very unique style, a very poetic style. Like even even your, your general sentence structure is very poetic, even when it's not a poem. So I think that's a great thing to have. And I really enjoyed your speech and, and definitely look forward to the next one. Thank you. Thank you, Darren, for an excellent evaluation. Our next evaluator will be giving us his perspective on the speech by Linda Ketchum. Help me welcome Jerome Manigan. Jerome. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Uh, Linda, first let me offer you congratulations on presenting your sixth speech from your advanced communicator uh, manual. That's excellent, excellent. Second, let me uh, share with the audience exactly what it is I was looking for. Uh, I closely observed you as you made your presentation, searching for a voice that is pleasing to listen to, proper balance of volume, pitch and rate, pauses to enhance your message, a voice that reflected and added meaning to your thoughts. And finally, lessons learned from previous speeches you did an excellent job across the board, an excellent job. Specifically, I was to evaluate your topic selection, volume, rate, pitch, quality, pauses, expressiveness, vocal variety, organization, word usage, body language. In every case except two, one being rate and the second being pauses, you were rated at the top of the uh, scale. Congratulations on that. What could the speaker have done differently to make the speech more effective? Uh, I wrestled with that. I'm not sure that there was much that you could have done to make it more effective. It was effective just as it was. But you may have considered actually sounding like the mouse when you talked about the mouse, or the cow when you talked about the cow. So in that area, there could have been some modification, some change. What did you like most about the speech? I liked the fact that the speech was a cautionary tale, and it told us of the importance of listening 
and responding appropriately to the need presented in the message. Linda, thank you very much for an excellent presentation. Look to hear more from you in the months ahead. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Jerome, for another excellent evaluation. Our next evaluator that we will hear from is the grammarian and ah counter. Sheila Mudbaker is going to come up here and give us some insight as to what kind of crutches we were using today and our use of the word of the day. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Bug. That's the word. Bug. That was bug that you didn't all use it constantly. But Tiffany used it twice, and I love Linda's use of stop bugging me as the very final sentence in her speech. What a wonderful ending to a great speech. I noticed that Christine used um once, which is very good, only one time, and the words with that, which is really a filler, and uh, ah, as in puts uh, instead of a, it was ah. Uh. Okay. And Jerome used the word wrestled rather than wrestled. So sometimes we use a word in a certain way and we forget that's not always the common usage for the word. So we try to get as close to common usage as possible. All in all, lovely grammar. Good job for everyone. Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Sheila. I thought I would hear from you about a word that our Toastmaster for the day used, which I thought was really interesting. I'm not sure it's a word. Grammarical. I think it's grammatical. I thought, grammarical, hmm. I guess that's spelled with an E. The last individual that, I, that we're going to hear from today on our evaluation team is our timer. Everyone help me welcome Kevin Voorhees. Kevin. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, audience at home. The purpose of our timing is to help us learn how to stand up, speak up, and sit down, and to help us develop the cornerstone discipline of being able to learn how to give a speech or a presentation within a set amount of time. Our speakers today, speaker number one, Don West, his time limit was five to seven minutes, and Don spoke for eight minutes, 11 seconds. Linda, Ke Linda Ketchum's speech was five to seven minutes, and Linda spoke for six minutes and 51 seconds. Our table topics were within the time frame. Darren spoke for a minute 50. Steve spoke for two minutes, seven seconds, and Tiffany spoke for one minute, 10 seconds. Our evaluators, we're within time. Darren Henderson spoke for 3 minutes 28 seconds and Jerome Manigan spoke for 2 minutes 19 seconds. Great job today everybody. Good job on time. Thank you Kevin. I hope you'll notice today all of the people on the evaluation team gave us a little bit of background as to the purpose of their evaluation. What they were trying to give us feedback about. I want to commend all of my evaluation team for doing that. The evaluations that we received I think were excellent. Uh, I wanted to comment on Darren's evaluation. I agree. I'm glad to see that you talked with Wes about the strengths in his speech and I too was wondering whether you were talking about a collage from your life or what I can do with my life, or just kind of in general, the multitude of experiences that we have, and that that can go into a collage. So, excellent points. Uh, gave Wes some, or Don, I'm sorry, Don some things to consider for his next speech. Good job. One of the things I wanted to also caution you on is when we're in the studio here, we have the microphone on the lectern. Don't pound on the lectern because it transmits that noise right into the microphone and winds up sounding rather booming 
on the soundtrack for our program. Jerome gave us another excellent evaluation. Congratulated Linda on what she did very well. I liked your use of the word of the day. I thought that was really good. You worked that in and you left us with the word of the day in your closing sentence. It was also a story with a overall theme or a call to action for us. I was really pleased when I saw that you were taking us from the story of the mouse in the farmhouse to how we are all tied together on this little spaceship we call Earth. Good job. I too agree with Jerome that you probably could have emphasized the vocal variety a little bit more. That's something I struggle with too. And you think, oh, I don't need to do it that much. But as Sheila's always told me, go over the top. Because then it'll probably be about right. <laughs> Sheila, good job on the word of the day and keeping track of our different crutches and flaws that we use in our speaking. I always enjoy hearing from Sheila. She has a really very interesting way of presenting her evaluation to us. Very conversational. Thank you, Sheila. And Kevin, thank you for filling in today as our timer. I appreciate your helping us out, and I'm thrilled to have you here visiting us today. Overall, our meeting has gone very well. We started at 9.25. We will end on time today. We'll actually have a little extra time. One of the things that I'd like to present to people, just to keep in the back of your mind, is that Table Topics, our Table Topics Master, try and come with a couple of extra questions because if we're a little short on some of the other roles in the meeting, we have an opportunity to give other people who don't have as large a speaking role an opportunity to speak. And that's a place where we can fill in our meeting a little bit better. But Christine, good job on the questions. I didn't quite know what to do at first with the question that you gave to me, but I managed. And that's part of what Table Topics is about, learning to think on your feet. I'm going to turn our meeting back to our Toastmaster for the day, Tiffany. Thank you, Steve, for a wonderful evaluation of today's meeting. It has been an honor and privilege to be the Toastmaster of today's TV Toastmaster meeting. I'd like to thank you all for sharing your time with us, and I would like to return control of the meeting back to our president, Darren Henderson. Thank you, Tiffany. A couple closing comments. I'd like to um, congratulate our two newest members, Don and Christine. Don, that was, a, that was a great speech, like I said, a lot of progress has been made since your first speech. And Christine, actually, I'm more of a, I like those questions that make you think, but don't make you think like, you know, What's the meaning of life or something like that? So I actually really liked your question. I thought you really hit the nail on the head with your questions. Also, I just want to tell everyone in the audience, it's a great way to spend a Saturday morning. I started my Saturday morning at work, and hopefully my boss isn't looking, but that's not the way I want to spend my Saturday mornings, but this is. <laughs> it's a great way to spend a Saturday morning coming to TV Toastmasters and spending it with such great people. And lastly, I'd like to bring up Kevin Voorhees, who is the District 40 Lieutenant Governor of Marketing for a special presentation. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Darren. Fellow Toastmasters and people in the viewing and audience, Toastmasters is an organization that values recognition of achievement. We have many uh, recognitions in our program. They encompass both a communication and a leadership track. During this time, when someone achieves the highest level in both the leadership and the communication track, they qualify for what's known as a Distinguished Toastmaster Award. I'd like to recognize someone in our audience today who has achieved the Distinguished Toastmaster Award. As the Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, I have the high honor and privilege 
at every Toastmasters conference to award and present our newest DTMs and announce their achievements. The person I'm recognizing today in achieving his Distinguished Toastmaster Award is someone who was a club mentor for a starting a new club at U.S. Bank, who was an area governor of Area 53 in the 2005-2006 year, and his high-performance leadership project was organizing an open house for this club. So with that, it gives me great pleasure and distinction to call up Distinguished Toastmaster Steve Ehrenholtz to receive his medallion. With that, I'd like to return control of our meeting back to the club president, Darren Henderson. Thank you, Kevin. And once again, congratulations to Steve. Steve's been a great member of this club for many years before I arrived at the club, and, and your leadership and, and help in this club has been much appreciated, Steve, so congratulations. And a great thing was he surprised you, I could tell. <laughs> Maybe you knew something was going on because Kevin was here. But um, with that, I'd like to adjourn TV Toastmasters Club meeting 9523. Thank you.